I've actually found that my learners are way more equipped to deal with the production of OERs than many academics oh, yeah. because yeah. we spend time working around issues around licensing copyright. So they're all very familiar with Creative Commons licensing. They're really? in a position, yeah, yeah. Okay. So my learners choose whether or not to license all of their work or their blogs or anything. Lots of them choose to go down the CC route because oh. they just think it's it's fantastic for yeah. them. So, um, but I've got to say that some of the most powerful OERs that I kind of use in my everyday practice are things that have actually been produced by learners themselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I love about that is the fact that if you are supervising a project, for instance, um, you kind of have, you know, a set list of projects and they go out to students and students uh, over semesters will pick the same project title and you kind of get the same project every time. When they're publishing the uh, projects online, um, then each successive student is able to build on the work of the mm. student before. And so things move on so much more quickly, the ideas develop more quickly, they're not reinventing the wheel in the same way. So as I say, if moving away from the sort of almost learning objects idea and looking at you know knowledge as this kind of living, breathing organism, that's where I think OERs are really, really effective. Yeah. And as I say, I think the learners have a huge role to play mm. in that. An important distinction between curriculum and content you're making mm. there. Um, and I think that that's one of those that that we often a distinction we often don't clear up because in one sense we talk about how a course is structured, how things get organized, how it gets in there, and then the actual day to day piece to piece can be a different conversation entirely. Um, the from a from a governmental perspective, they're going to be looking at the global issue, right? Yeah, how do yeah. we organize a structure yeah. whereby instead of buying textbooks every year, we're putting that. Five hundred thousand dollars into this project over here, mm. right? That's one thing. On the other side, because you still need to structure. If you take the textbook out of a lot of classrooms, there's no structure to the yeah, classroom anymore. Yeah. So you need to replace it with something. Yeah. I mean, not because I think you can't have unstructured classrooms, but because you need to do this gradually. Like you're not gonna. Mm. There's no, no way you're ever gonna sell change when what you say is, what we're gonna do is stop everything we're doing today and tomorrow we're going to bring the dogs into the classroom and they're going to teach it's you yeah. can't do it yeah right? so i think that there's that part and on the other side totally what you're talking about with the student supported stuff and i i, I still don't do enough of that mm. and i think because every time it happens and it's always like you say it's always powerful people always understand better and who better to explain something to someone else than somebody who has just learned it yeah absolutely. who has just come to terms with what that thing might mean yeah. and they go look I was working on this, yeah. and this is what I figured out over here. And often they're way more passionate about it. Yeah. Even yeah. Than Getting the students to design the course, yeah. basically. Yeah. And that next yeah. term's course is the course that you lot designed. Yeah. Yeah. And they will then refine yeah. that course yeah. and totally. pass it. The, yeah. the, the courses can be passed on and material can be recycled. Yeah. But that's a key for the, the OER development we see. There's a lot of studies indicate that where lots of people are producing good stuff. Mm. Yeah, reuse. But nobody's re reusing it. People no. don't trust other people's work. Mm. That people are very reluctant to use someone else's resources. But is that because they don't trust it, or because they're worried that people might think that they're incompetent if they haven't invented be, their yeah. own? Yeah. You know, there's a, the, um, this culture shift where yeah, it's yeah. all right to use someone else's. You're not being yeah. lazy by using. It. There's that. Yeah, be, get afraid of being branded. Yeah. I've had this fight with David Wiley, who is one of those sort of. Founder, I wouldn't say founders of OER, but one of the sort of originators of a lot of this conversation. And he always talks about the tension between generalizability and specificity. And this is where OER always runs into trouble. Is that if you want your thing to be reused, you need to generalize it. Yeah. So it can work for lots of people. Mm. But once you generalize it, it loses the real directionality yeah. that you want to have yeah. in a piece that you're using. Yeah. And the further specific you are, the less number of people it's going to be useful yeah, to. Yeah. So you always end up in this place where you're trying to, to, to fit inside that spectrum somewhere. And as a teacher, or as sort of people who are encouraged teachers, do we want to be encouraging them to market their OERs so that they're the most reusable? Or do we want them to be creating stuff mm -hmm. that's contextual to the work that that's they're doing? Smart, yeah. So there's that challenge. And I think the other one is, as teachers still aren't working in networks, mm. they don't have the literacies to do the verification yeah. that, like if I saw something and I looked at it and said Helen Keegan on it, I would hit play and play to my classroom without even looking at it. Yeah. Because I know her work. Trust. I, I have that trust in yeah. her work the same as I do with a lot of other people. Yeah. In my, it, it would be an adult classroom. <laughs> but um, there is, 
those they're not accustomed to those kinds of trust networks and developing no. those trust networks. They do in their you know if teacher X in their in their staff room said here try this, yeah, they, they would be yeah. they'd feel comfortable with going to do that. But we have to build those trust networks, mm. and that's you know there's a, there's a lot of work there, yeah. <laughs> trying to get people to see the world in that kind of. And again, way. first of all, you got to get them out there. Yeah, well, there you're back to the same conversation. Back to the yeah. getting right. them to dare to connect. As yeah, well. that's right. But it's amazing how many. Um, lecturers, I think specifically, you know, people in HG are putting their course design and course notes online in, mm. say, open Google Docs that can be found from anywhere, but they're just not calling them OERs. No, I mean, and yet are they're we... reusable. They're yeah. licensed Creative Commons, but as I say, how do you find them? You find mm. them because you might be looking for a certain term, or so. I just think that you know the, the database and the metadata is also an issue here. Could be also we, we we end up getting stuck in our own alphabet soup, and we mm. um, we we keep calling all all these cherished concepts we have have got nice abbreviations or mm. complicated names, which means that we sort of alienate the ordinary teachers. Who sort of yeah. think, that sounds very complicated. Yeah. I don't even want to know about it. So OERs yeah. and MOOCs and you know everything yeah. else. And so is the issue with is jargon, the, isn't it? Yeah, we're we're yeah. we're, we're, we're isolate. We're not getting through to people because they're afraid of the jargon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, when I think of the examples that really strike me of how that openness works out um, in my own practice, um, this spring I did a course with uh, contract grading, and I went looking for people who had done it. I found Kathy Davidson's work mm. at Duke, and started with her contract grading contract, which she had just openly published. It wasn't work together again. I know who Kathy Davidson is. I know that I know some of her work. I took it by the time I was finished with it looked totally different. And there are five or six other people who came along behind me and from my blog found that and started yeah. to go it out. So it works through those networks of connection. And I think that you know we we're talking about libraries this morning. One of the challenges if we think about it like a library, here's the official stuff, mm. we run into the challenge that you're talking about. To me, without the networks of trust there's no way to spread the information because mm. it has to spread along the trust network. Mm. Yeah. Anytime, unless we assume that the institutions, like everybody's going to use Oxford stuff. Yeah. Like unless yeah. we do it that way. I mean, if you look at the the stuff that's come out of the Secretary mm. of Education in, in your oh, country, yeah. essentially they're looking at OER as a form of imperialism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's that in there too. So yeah. Yeah, well, let's call this the official one over here and we'll yeah. all use that one. I mean, MIT has been at that for eight years yeah. now, or ten years now, since uh, since 01, actually, yeah. the first um, OCW.